Okay, so today I'm going to guide you through the assignment. So um, let me pause this and show you what you should have. Okay, so I'm going to guide you through completing all of this information. I highly recommend that you do a split screen. And I recommend that because as I go through this presentation over here, this one, you'll be able to fill out the information in this um, graphic organizer here. Now, you don't need to just leave it where it says determine the purpose. Obviously, you need to put more information in here. Here, there's not one space in here where you should omit adding information. So I'm going to go over this very, very detailed. So I'm trying something new. So instead of me doing the presentation on the smart board, and then everybody like, whoa, hang on, I just quite, didn't quite get that. I'm going to do it on this video. We're going to see how it works, see how you like it, see if it works most beneficial. Because, you know, people work at different paces. Okay, so enough of that. Let's get to the slideshow. Okay, so we're talking about multimedia presentation. <clears throat> For the purpose of this class, it's just going to be Microsoft PowerPoint. We don't deal with Google Docs, any of that stuff. All right, so the first thing you need to do is determine the purpose. Is it educational? Is it a persuasive presentation? Are you educating someone? Are you telling someone something they did not know? Are you telling them how to do something? So that, remember, that is the educational presentation. Persuasive. Are you trying to convince someone of something? Are you trying to convince someone to come do something, to participate in something? You're trying to convince someone to do something that they might not normally do. Or they might do it. Remember the example I gave you? I had a student last year that did his persuasive presentation on for his Christmas gift. Yeah, it was a Christmas gift. For um, getting a new iPhone. Or getting an iPhone. The student, I don't think, had an iPhone. So he was very persuasive because I think he has an iPhone. So he did a phenomenal job of convincing his parents. Okay, then you have narrative. Narrative right here, this is telling a story. So this is, um, for example, the girl. She went to the prom already, and she wanted to tell her friends about how her day was, or you could do like a 8th um, grade social. Perfect idea. So, you know, we always have an eighth grade social. So you could do it about the eighth grade social at the end of the at the end of the year where you could have pictures of it before pictures of you and your friends telling them about it. So I want to be very clear that these are three distinctive purposes. OK, so step two is identify your target audience. Who is the audience? <laughs> So the first thing, the first way you can do that is by determining the age group. Anytime you use age group to determine the audience, you must be very, very, I didn't want it to do that. You must be very, very specific. For example, teens or youth age 12 to 16. Now, if you just say youth, youth what age? Youth could mean um, like children my daughter's age, ages 10 to 16, ages 10 to 18. So you have to be very specific of who your target audience is because you will tweak your target, you will tweak your presentation based on the audience that you've chosen. You would not use the same logo, I'm sorry, the same, um, what are all those words, all those same verbiage for 16 year olds that you would for middle schoolers they they just don't use the same wording they don't use the same language they do use the word like a lot um, so common interest you could also 
identify your target audience by common interest. Common interest is as it sounds. It's very simple. It's in common interest that this group shares. So here are some examples. They could share the same interest in sports, like they could be a Cowboys fan. They could be a Braves fan. They might like Legos, you know, like the game, the little toy Legos. Or you could be really into video games. Now, you could be very specific when you talk about video games. When you talk about video games here, you could be talking about Call of Duty or Minecraft because those are two very distinctly different games that have distinctly different gamers. Not necessarily the same kind of person plays both games. Or you could identify your target audience through group membership. Right here, this is things that you have to be members of, like Boy Scouts, sports teams. I don't know. I'm not so good at that because I wasn't in a lot of group memberships. Or it could be the 6th grade class, 7th grade class, 8th grade class. Because you have to be a member of the 6th grade class to understand some 6th grade things. Okay, so I hope that's pretty clear. All right, step three, you're going to storyboard the content. A storyboard is nothing more, um, think of it like a comic strip. So it's a collection of frames and it's on a piece of paper. Yes, I did say the word paper. Please don't fall out of your seat. So it is on a piece of paper and you use it to determine the number of slides and you use it to help put your presentation in the right order. A lot of times, and I see this when students um, come in to work on things, they start to do it and then it's out of order and they're like, ah, oh, I have to get this to over here. You, This helps you just slow the process down and really think it through. Okay, step four, select a design. So you have to make sure it's appropriate for the purpose of the presentation. You want to do colors and designs you can also use templates for example the the presentation I did here I did use a template and I kind of like it it's crinkled up paper because you know me paper we're not really good friends <laughs> but I warn you if you choose a template be sure it's appropriate for example, if you choose a beach template, you do not want to be talking about the mountains. That's kind of ridiculous. If you choose um, to do a presentation about hurricanes, because I know y'all had to do some in science recently. If you had to choose to do a presentation about hurricanes, you do not want to do... Um, a template with um, what's a good example of a bad template for that you don't want to do a template with lots of pictures of um, like the middle of the United States it should relate the template should relate to your presentation it should coincide okay step five edit the master slide so the master slide is exactly what it sounds like. So if you notice here on this, did you see right here at the very, very bottom down here? It has apply procedures to develop multimedia presentations used in business. Did you notice this is on every slide? So I think I deleted it out of some slides. But this is on every slide, and this is done through the master slide. So then I don't have to put it on these. It's automatically there. And I have formatted the footer, the color scheme, the background colors. You see all of the slides I have right here. This is all one color. And then the text is all one color. The bullets here, these two sets of bullets are blue and these are yellow. This is all the formatting that I did in the master slide. And I did that so it would be very, very consistent. If you add a logo or a graphic on the master slide, it's going to be in every single slide in your presentation. So that's the only thing I'll warn you of. Be sure if you put it on the master slide, it will be throughout your entire uh, presentation. So these are the things you want to do. Format the footer, 
format the color scheme and background colors, format font sizes and styles. The minimum font size should be 24 point font. That's very, very important right here. Now, you want to stick to very plain and simple fonts, and I know that drives you insane, and I'm so sorry for that. However, in the business world, you don't really want to have the scripts and the filigrees and the chiller and the um, wally doodle or whatever it is, willy wonkas, because if you do, it's harder to read. And you want to be sure that your presentation comes across clear and remember, you don't lose any integrity of your content. You want to edit the bullets. And the purpose of that is so the bullets are consistent in every page. You don't want little triangles on this one and diamonds on the next one. It should be consistent. Or you don't want smiley faces here on this slide and sad faces on the next one. It should be consistent straight across your presentation. Um, and then adjust line spacing. So, for example, this is all single spaced. <clears throat> and that's how I chose to do mine. Okay, step six. Enter the content. So, you have the rule of sevens. Really easy to remember, or you can remember a seven by seven. You should not have it. I do it differently because I'm giving you the content and I want it to be visible for you to see. When you're doing a presentation, you want people to have to rely on you to get the information. So there should not be more than seven lines of text per slide. So let's go back to this one. Would this one pass or fail? This is one. So looking at this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this one would be a fail. Unless you could group this together. This would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm kind of close, but I'm pushing it. Okay, so seven lines of text per slide, seven words per line. You do not want your audience to strictly be reading from your PowerPoint here and not pay you any attention. That would probably be very annoying, and you'd pick up on it, and you'd be really like, are these people not listening to me? So remember, enter the content, the rule of sevens, seven by seven. Seven lines of text per slide, seven words per line. Super important. Okay, and you have to have appropriate language and grammar for your target audience. If your um, target audience is for, let's just say, what's a good group? Let's say it's for elementary school. You do not want to use the slang from middle school because it just hasn't gotten there yet. It's a little slower to get to middle school. And then they're not going to necessarily understand what you're talking about. And you should have appropriate language. Remember what we talked about? Using the, using the correct word. So be sure you're not using a homophone like meet, M-E-E-T, and meet, M-E-A-T. That could cause some serious problems in your presentation. So you also want to check for any spelling errors. All right, so now you add step seven. Add and format graphics, audio, and video. So you want these graphics to enhance your presentation, not to distract from your presentation. So you want to place your image close enough that it illustrates the text. So for example, if you have these two together, you might be able to connect the dots. You know that the light bulb goes with, we had a bright idea. But if it's closer together, it's very clear that you're like, we had a bright idea. Ding, 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 here's the light bulb. We had a great idea. So that's pretty clear. You don't want to make your tech image too big because if you notice, this image is a little bit bigger, or too small, and my little word small over here. So both of these images are appropriate size. It depends on how you're going to be using them. But don't make one giant just because you really want to emphasize it. It should just enhance your content. All right, so use consistent graphic types. This is a cartoon or clip art. 
if you choose to use cartoon or clip art your entire presentation must be cartoon or clip art you can't go back and forth you can't go this one oh I'm gonna use cartoon now I'm gonna use a picture oh no 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 <coughs> that's super unprofessional and it's very inconsistent so you cannot ever mix cartoon and photograph cool got it this is a photograph this is cartoon alright so the file size image should not slow down your presentation meaning you should not have an image so big that your presentation slows down that does happen it's generally a very large image that you're putting in there hopefully we're not going to have anyone with that problem okay so you should have consistent format consistent sizing these are pretty equal sizes the only dip, the only problem is one's clip art and one is picture okay audio and video how will the file play so if you have audio how is it going to play that didn't do what I wanted how will the file play will it be on a click will it be automatic um, you see here like I clicked something I clicked in the wrong place and it went to a different slide so will it how is it going to play in your document what what is the next process after that okay and will the file be embedded or linked so here's the difference embedded that didn't go where I wanted either I apparently messed okay so here we go <laughs> I messed with my own macros my errors okay so determine how the file will play will it be will also your presentation be looped meaning um, you know how you see the kiosk at the mall I hope and they sometimes have a TV there and it's automatically scrolling through one screen to the next so is it automatically going to play or is it gonna play on a click let's see if I can find my linked all right, so a linked object, it means the presentation file is save, saves the actual file name as opposed to the whole file. So what that means, summing it up, this down here is a link. So if I click on it, well, it's just not going to be very cooperative today. Today is just not my day. Well, okay, so normally when you click on this, it's going to take you to that page. So that's the difference. All right, and an embedded, this is actually a Word document right here. You see this? It looks like it's part of my presentation, but it's really not. It is a Word document. So an embedded object is stored in this file rather than clicking and taking you to a document. It's right here. So this is actually a Word document. And I embedded it in the presentation. So that's the difference in all this. Let's go back and find my stuff. <laughs> Since I didn't have my links correct. All right, so adding animations and transitions, step eight. Add an animation. It's going to add visual interest and emphasize key parts. Let's take a chance and see if this works. Yay. Perfect example. You see how this cute little mouse down here? She's walking. How cute is that? That's part of an animation. This is an animation. All of this was animations. So you want to see it again? there we go these are all animations making text and pictures they fly in they were bouncing there was a lot of stuff going on on this page so you can animate it by word letter line <clears throat> you can use interest effects let's try this again let's just show you so you see it this is by group so it added them by line okay and that's how I chose for it to be entered and you can use dimming see how this is here this is a different color because you might want to focus the readers information 
on this, on the word animation. You can use emphasis to stress points. So you see how we use the little car? And that really helped you hopefully understand animation pretty quickly. All right. <clears throat> so animation, it can be applied manually or you can apply a scheme. A scheme is, um, it's preset. It's already done for you. All you have to do is just kind of tweak it and play with it. All right, transitions, they control the flow of information. So this transitioned it, how one slide, how it changes from one slide to the next. So transitions, there are so many options. And you'll find this out when we start working with PowerPoint this week. So you can set them for an entire presentation. Or if you've noticed, these presentations, there are different presentations for different, different transitions for different um, slides. And then the speed of the transitions should be consistent throughout your presentation, just simply to enhance your message and reinforce your content. All right. So number nine is practice. You have to practice. You could sit there and say, yep, mm -hmm, I did it. No, because no matter how much you can say you did it, you still should practice some more. Practice the timing, how you're going to be saying it, your speech patterns, the tone. How many of your parents have ever said to you, you've got an attitude with me, yeah, little girl or little boy? It's not what you said, it's how you said it. So it's the tone. It's how high your voice is or how low your voice is. You want to find one that's kind of right in the middle. So then you're not really super excited and you're not really upset. You're just kind of really happy in the middle. The speed, I know I sometimes have a very bad habit of talking quickly. So you have to really make an effort to slow down, but you don't want to speak too slow. So you have to really work on it and figure out what you're comfortable with. Because when you do presentations, you're in front of people. Sometimes you might get nervous and you have to plan for the unexpected. I've learned to plan for anything that can go wrong will definitely probably go wrong. Okay, and transition phrases. It's the way you change from one slide to the next. So you'd be like, okay, so you're ready to go. To, we're going to go on to step, step 10. It's how you change over your words to introduce the next one. So step 10, revising as needed. See how I did that smooth transition there? Mm -hmm. All right, so repeat steps four through nine, and you should fine tune the presentation. You should always, always go back and look at your presentation. It should never be erased to the finish line. It should always be, let me make sure this is good to go. And then you should Definitely, always have a second person look over your work. I am terrible for not seeing my own errors. Obviously, since I didn't link some of the pages to the right page. <laughs> Bad for that. So, always have a second person to look over your presentation. Because you want to make sure it works. You want to make sure everything is where it's supposed to go. You make sure everything is spelled correctly. You don't have the wrong homophone in there. Um, make sure you don't have complete sentences. When you do PowerPoint, it should be like bullets. It shouldn't be writing a story. You should not have a story of how Mary met Sally and how they went to go see Jack the Pumpkin King. You should not be, you should not have the words to a story here. Now having a picture here of Jack the Pumpkin King and Mary and Sally over here, great. And then, um, and then some words to highlight it. So as you're telling the story, the, the picture emphasizes the story you're telling and it complements it. So I hope you under, got all of this. It's super duper easy. 
Um, if there are any slides you missed, go back, pause it, go back through it again. So we're going to give this a whirl. See if you like this as opposed to the other way. We'll see what works best. I'm definitely always um, on board for trying something new. So I hope you all have a great day and I will see you shortly.